Hello again fellow Benedictans. Today we are going to continue on the beginner's guide damage dealer series. And this time I present to you Dark Knight beginner gear sets and suggestions. Much like Warrior slash Ninja which I presented to you in the last video on this topic, this specific build can get really really strong early on. So try it out if Dark Knight is your thing or if you are thinking about trying it. However, Dark Knight requires more gear sets, thus you need to put more money and time into it, and more knowledge than you do on Warrior, at least compared to what I touched upon in my Warrior Beginner's Guide. But don't get discouraged, Dark Knight is very rewarding to play and engaging. Dark Knight brings a whole other set of things to a group or solo content, with a massive HP pool, if you use Drain Free correctly, stun spells and other niche spells at their disposal. You are gonna be one sturdy frontline job if you play this job correctly and if you make use of Sagan plus third eye. And dread spikes is not to be taken lightly. On a side note, all almond bosses are arcana, so Dark Knight gives an advantage to any group fighting these. Obviously, this applies to fighting any arcana, so don't forget to use arcane circle on your party when you are fighting these. And you also have arcane crest to use on your arcana enemies to weaken them even further. Rant warning. I see way too many dark knights out there dropping dead left and right for no reason. Dark knight is one of the most sturdy jobs if not the most sturdy frontline job in the game if played correctly. Even more so if you slap an apocalypse on it which basically gives you invincible mode depending on your situation. Please, for the love of god, don't put merits into Diabolic Eye. Drain Free is your new religion. Study and learn how to use it effectively in any situation, as I will show you later in the guide. Dread Spikes is your god and bible. Use this after Drain Free to maximize it, and don't be afraid to stun, weapon bash, Use Drain 1 and 2 to get your HP back, and if shit is going down, slap on that hybrid set. And don't forget that Hassle is not the only thing that your samurai support job will bring to the table. Use Sagan plus Third Eye when you have to. And as a last resort, cancel that last resort if you really have to, or don't use it at all. This is usually not needed. But I'm just saying, use last resort wisely. This is not a how to play Dark Knight guide, but please people, if you follow the above steps and the steps below, you will be the last man standing. I cringe so hard every time I see these Dark Knights drop dead and go, lol, Dark Knight so squishy. Meanwhile, they don't even drain free and probably none of the above is taken into consideration at all. I think that's it for the rant, thanks for listening, let's move on. If you want a playstyle guide on Dark Knight, go to Rua's channel here on YouTube and check out his Dark Knight guide over there. Link is gonna be down in the description below to his video. Anyways, let's get into it. So, we are specifically gonna talk about Dark Knight slash Samurai, using the Great Axe from Ambuscade, the Kaya Shopper, or the max upgraded one, Lycurgus. Note that to make the most use out of this, you want to max upgrade it. It's gonna be a huge difference. What makes this weapon really, really powerful for Dark Knight is the fact that you get a TP bonus depending on your current HP. So we are gonna go through how to drain free effectively, some good gear sets and tips and tricks for getting the most out of your drain free. How to make a quick skill chain that you can magic burst that drain free on for capped HP. And even if you can't magic burst that drain free, or if it fails, this should still put you at around 5k HP. So you should be able to keep that 1000 TP bonus you get if you stay above 5k health. Or at least very close to that 1000 TP bonus. Other useful and unique features that you get while using a great axe are the following weapon skills that can be very good weapon skill starters to weaken your foes. The most useful one probably being armor break. 
minus 25 defense if unresisted. This stacks with Dia, Boxstep and Geo Frailty, but does not stack with other defense down like Angon or Full Break from a main warrior. Then you also have Shield Break and Weapon Break, the first one lowering evasion and the second one lowering the foe's attack. These are less useful, but it's good to know that you have them because there are scenarios where you might want to use them. You will also get access to Fell Cleave when you use a Great Axe, a very powerful physical AoE weapon skill. Anyways, the sets we are going to go through can be used for a lot of other weapons, but I suggest you try this one out because it's a real powerhouse starting out and it's for sure one of Dark Knight's most powerful weapons. And even later, it's still very very good. Unless you have an ultimate weapon, this or Nagling, the sword from Ambuscade, are probably gonna be your go-tos for Dark Knight. And even if you have an ultimate weapon, you might want to start a fight with this just to put on armor break, unless you have someone else with defense down abilities. Things to note. Scythe, Sword and Greatsword are pretty much the same sets when it comes to the TP sets and weapon skill sets. So you can use the gear suggested for a Torque Cleaver slash Greatsword build. Resolution however is another set. For Ambuscade Greatsword, Nandaka, Ground Strike build. For Savage Blade build with Nagling. For Ambuscade Scythe, Drepanum for a Spiral Hell build. For Apocalypse Relic Scythe for a Catastrophe build, or for Angada and Cross Reapers ban. Entropy is another weapon skill set though. So use whichever weapon you prefer, but this is mainly for the Great Axe build. So let's get to it. Since this is a beginner's guide, I'm not gonna present your best in slot options unless they are fairly easy to get or not too expensive. If you want best in slot sets, go to the link down in the description, I might touch on other options in some cases, even though they are hard to get. Just to show you that there are other options than the bis presented in the link. And we're gonna start with your drain free set, since this is the foundation of this build. So for your weapon slot, you are gonna be using Lycurgus, since unless you have access to Dacnomania, drops from Warder of Courage in Esheron, or Miss Anthropy drops from Teles in Rising Jima. Lycurgus is basically gonna be your highest magic accuracy main weapon, which also helps with the drain freeze and you also get the benefit of not having to switch weapons. A honorary mention, if you happen to be in a situation where you don't need the extra magic accuracy, you could go with Animatius Scythe drop from Grimshell Shock Troopers 2, Macro Orb Fight or Bought Sheep from the Auction House if there are any available. For your grip piece, go with Kaya Grip until you upgrade it to Konsu. Upgraded and obtained through Ambuscade. Obviously, just use a lower grade tier of this one until you upgrade it more. For your ranged or ammo slot, Go with Kayabo until you can upgrade it to Ulr. Upgrade it and obtain through Ambuscade. Obviously, just use a lower grade tier of this one until you upgrade it more. Head slot is gonna be Fallen's Burgonet plus 2. This is the Dark Knight Relic Head Reforged. Use the plus 1 until you get this one. Note that this one is super important for the Dark Seal plus duration to your dark spell casted. So also do not forget to merit your dark seal 5 out of 5. You want your HP boost to last for as long as possible and upgrade this to plus 3 whenever you can. Now for your body piece, go with Carmine Scale Mail plus 1 if you can afford it. Any augment path is fine really. Augmentable at Nolan in Norg at I7 with Esha Elixirs. Obtained from Duke Vepar in Esha Ro'an or from Surim in Norg at I7 for 400 domain points. Bewitched Mail, the cursed item you need to finish it, is bought on the auction house for about 50k for the normal quality one. Hand slot. Fallen Finger Scoutless plus 2, another of Dark Knight's relic pieces reforged, 
go with the plus one until you can get this or the plus three. Leg slot, here will give you two options. A sheet cushions obtained from Tangata Manu in Eshacita. Any argument path is fine. And then we have Fallen's Flanchard plus two. Another of Dark Knight's reforged relic pieces. Go with the ones I mentioned above unless you have these at plus two or above. For our feed slot, we're gonna use either Ratri Solarets normal quality or plus one for the duration bonus of 20 to 25%. Obtained from the auction house for about 150k. Since this is a SU free piece, you will need to have spent 500 job points or more to be able to equip them. So use these other options until you get SU free. I prefer the extra duration from Ratri always. But your other option is Ignomi Solarets plus 2. This is Dark Knight's artifact armor reforged, upgraded with omen cards. Or if you're still working on your AF, use your Flamma Gambiris plus 1 normal quality or plus 2, obtained through Ambuscade. Back piece is gonna be Knit Mantle. This is the job specific cape obtained by clearing reefs. For this to be good, you want to augment it with ideally drain and aspir potency plus 25 and dark magic skill plus 10, or at least close to these numbers. You augment this one with refractive crystal at the Trovia at the Inventors Coalition in Western Adolin at J10. Your waste slot is going to be the Austerity Belt plus one, obtained from Second Walk in Walk of Echoes, surged only, or bought from the auction house for about two to three million. Neck piece is going to be Era Pendant, obtained from Omen Midboss Glassy Gorger. If you are working on this piece, use any magic accuracy neck piece you have. One option is the Sancity Necklace obtained from Serum in Nord at I7 for 100 domain points. Earrings are gonna be Hirudina Earring obtained from Lamprey Lord, Void Walker NM. For your other ear, there are multiple options. Use your highest magic accuracy earring available to you. A really easy option being Guati Earring dropped from Iron Beak in Kusa in Delve Mariami Ravine, or after killing it you get the option to buy it with Plas from Fori Pori in Western Adolin I-10 for 50k Plas. Rings are gonna be Archon Ring obtained from Arch Dynamis Lord in Dynamis Xarsabar, and the Evanescence Ring obtained from Sava Savanovic in Esha Rohan. That's it for the drain set. Don't forget to get yourself a pair of Heathen's Flanchard plus one, or normal quality. These are the Empyrean leg pieces, reforged, to use when you activate Never Void. They will increase your Never Void drain potency to a total of 85% from 50%. So get this piece as soon as possible. Normal quality is 80%. I'm gonna show you some examples on how to use this to magic burst. The skill chain without using weapon bash plus ignomy gauntlets will be steel cyclone to keen edge for gravitation and then magic burst your drain free on that for hopefully capped HP at 9.9k if unresisted. Always use dark seal and never void when doing drain free. If it's down for whatever reason, either wait or just use it anyways, any HP boost you can get is better than none. If you have weapon bash up and you have the reforged artifact gauntlets, ignomy gauntlets in your weapon bash set, you can start with weapon bash into keen edge. This will create a gravitation skill chain for you to magic burst on. This one is very useful to quickly get capped HP or if you are fighting a mob with little HP. If you cannot skill chain for whatever reason and magic burst it, yes, dark seal plus never void and pick a target that is not resistant to magic 
and drain free that sucker. You will still get close to 5k or over 5k HP with the set mentioned earlier. Always drain free when you can. There are situations when it's impossible. Like if you are only fighting undead, as these type of mobs can't be drained. But always try to look for a way to get that drain free anyways. Even though it looks like it's not gonna work, there might be a mob nearby that you can drain, etc, etc. A pro tip for Dynamis Divergency draining. If your Link Shell or Pug group is pulling the statues on green eyes, physical weak mobs will spawn. You will have to drain free the statues or magic burst drain free them to be able to get any HP boost. Cause you will get nothing if you're trying to drain free a green eyed spawned mob. If you are pulling the statues on blue eyes however, you won't have to worry about this and can drain free any mob freely. You can drain free the red eyed statue mobs, the NMs, if you really really have to. Also, for the wave 1 bosses in Dynamis D, you usually do darkness skill chains on this dude to kill it. Time this towards the end of its life for a 5 plus minute capped HP going into wave 2. Let's get to the TP set now. So your main weapon will obviously be Lycurgus. For grip we have multiple options, I'm gonna name a few that you can use until you get your hands on the end goal which is gonna be the Utter Grip obtained from the Omen boss Kin. With this gear you should be able to solo your Utter Grip if you really want to with some practice. Until you get your hands on that bad boy though, you can use Dupless Grip Easiest just to buy from the auction house, if any are available. Pole grip is also an option, otherwise stick to Kaya grip or Konsu, if you have those grips. There are a bunch of other options obviously, so slap whatever multi-attack, accuracy or store TP grip you have on and go to town until Utter grip is yours. For ammo piece you have Ginsen obtained from high tier battlefield the warrior's path 2. If you want to spend some money go get the Argelmer orb normal quality bought on the auction house. The high quality is the superior choice obviously but very expensive. Other less sexy options are Seafing Bomblet plus 1 from Unity NM Grand Grenade. Interesting option though if you have r 15 it through Odyssey. The haste plus 5% from it can open up for some cool builds. You could also just stick to Kayabo Ulr full time here if you really want to. It's not a super bad option in all honesty. However, the above options are easy to come by so really no reason. Now for your headpiece. Flama Suketa plus 1 obtained through Ambuscade. Upgrade it to plus 2 as soon as possible. Body piece Valorous Mail obtained from Yakshi in Risenjima or from Serum in Norg at i7 for 800 domain points. Augment this body piece with either double attack or store TP using Fern, Taup or Pellucid Stones at Osem in Norg. Preferably 5% to double attack. Other options are Emishu Hobart augment to path B, Abduration obtained from Duke Vepar in Esharoan or from Serum in Norg at i7 for 400 domain points and the Vexed Hobart is bought on the auction house. Or just stick to Flama Corazin plus 1 or plus 2 obtained from Ambuscade until you get the above body pieces. Another body to keep your eye out for is the Founder's Breastplate, obtained from August in Sinister Rain. This may or may not be your best body piece when fighting Arcana, like the Omen Mega Bosses. Hands. Sulevia Scoutless plus 1 until you get plus 2, obtained from Ambuscade. There are multiple other options here, use what you have. Flama, Imicho or whatever. Legs. Ignomini Flanchard plus 2, upgrade to plus 3 when possible. This obviously takes some time. Upgrade through Omen. Other options are Flamadeers plus 1 from Ambuscade. Or Sulevia's Cushes plus 1, 
also from Ambuscade. If you use a lot of Solevia pieces in your set, make sure you still hit the gear haste cap at 25%. Feet. Flamma Gambiris plus 1 until you get them to plus 2, obtained through Ambuscade. Waste piece is gonna be Eos Gea Belt normal quality or plus 1, bought from the auction house. If you need more haste for whatever reason, slap on a belt with more haste here. Back piece is gonna be your job specific cape from Ambuscade. Ancus mantle augmented with dex plus 20, double attack plus 10, accuracy plus 30, attack plus 20, and either physical damage taken minus 10% or damage taken minus 5%. Rings are going to be Petra of Ring, obtained from Rue in Esharan, and Shirich Ring, normal quality or plus one, bought on the auction house. Another option is Flamma Ring from Ambuscade. If you are missing any of these, slap on any ring with multi-hit that you have or store TP, otherwise go Accuracy or Dexterity. For earrings, same deal here, go for multi-hit, store TP or accuracy, dexterity. Brutal earring obtained from Seghera in Port Juno at I8 by trading her 75 ancient beast coins. Your next earring is gonna be Sesson's earring obtained from high tier battlefield 1 to be feared 2. Neck piece, you are gonna want to use Abyssal Beads normal quality or plus one obtained from the auction house and augmented either by killing mobs in Dynamis Divergency or with Heroes Crystals or Aggregate at Oboro in Port Juno. There are a bunch of other options for the next slot. If you just want to save for a plus one Abyssal Beads neck in the future, one of them being Lissome Necklace obtained from Warder of Loyalty in Azure One. Otherwise, go for any store TP, a courtesy or multi-hit neck you can get your hands on. That's it for your TP set. When we are touching on the TP sets, let's touch upon which pieces to put on for your hybrid set. You are gonna combine your TP set with certain minus damage taken pieces. So let's go through those pieces here and you will combine them with your TP set. For your hybrid set, your ring options are Defending Ring, obtained from King Behemoth or Sovereign Behemoth in Behemoth's Dominion. Then you have Moonbeam Ring, obtained from the Auction House. And another option is Gelatinous Ring plus one, obtained from Unity NM Garbage Gel. Can be augmented for some sick HP plus bonus. For your neck piece, you have Loriket Torque plus one obtained from the Unity NM Sovereign Behemoth or the Twilight Torque obtained from Abyssia Megaboss Shinryu. For your head slot, we have Sulevia's Mask plus one until you get plus two, obtained through Ambuscade. Legs, we have Sulevia's Cushes plus one until you get plus two, also obtained through Ambuscade. Now, if you want to change out your ammo piece, you have Staunch Tatlum, normal quality or plus one, bought from the auction house. With this combined with the TP set earlier mentioned, you will get close to minus physical damage taken cap at 50%. Just make sure that with whatever you end up combining, still hit the 25% haste from gear. So if you have to slap on a Tempest Fugit waste piece, for plus 14% haste or Silefi belt plus 1, haste plus 9%, do it. So let's move on to your weapon skill sets. And we're gonna start with the set for your armor break or other break weapon skills. It's gonna be the same set if you use scythe and use infernal scythe for attack down. Focus here is going to be on magic accuracy and accuracy. The first to actually hit the defense down status and the second to actually hit the weapon skill. Headpiece is going to be Flamma Suketa plus one, obtained through Ambuscade, 
body piece is gonna be Flamma Corazin plus one or plus two obtained from Ambuscade. Hands Flamma Manopolas plus one or plus two obtained from Ambuscade. Legs Flamma Deers plus one or plus two obtained from Ambuscade. Feet Flamma Gambiras plus one or plus two also from Ambuscade. Neck piece Era Pendant obtained from Omen Midboss Glassy Gorger. Until you get this, use any accuracy neck or magic accuracy neck you have available to you. Waist Eshan Stone obtained from Urma Lulu in Esha Sita. Rings are gonna be Stikini Rings, normal quality, times two, bought from the auction house, or any accuracy, magic accuracy rings you got like the Flamma Ring. Earrings are gonna be Malignance Earring, obtained from High Two Battlefield Maiden of the Dusk 2, and the Hermetic Earring, obtained from Bukka, Pukka and Alpshukra Trio NN in Esha Sita. Ammo Piece, Hydrocera, obtained from Perithos in Esha Rohan. Back Piece is gonna be the same one as you use for your TP set, or if you want to make an extra back piece, just for this, change the accuracy attack stat to magic accuracy. Now we are gonna go through your damage weapon skills. And your main weapon skill will be Steel Cyclone and Second Upheaval. If solo skill chaining these two weapon skills go hand in hand. Both sets for beginners are gonna be just about the same set. Felt Cleave use pretty much the exact same set. Felt Cleave being your AoE weapon skill. So, your headpiece is gonna be Odyssean Helm, obtained from Sabotender Royale in Raisinjima, or from Surim in Norg for 800 domain points. Augment this at Osem in Norg with Fern, Pellucid, or Top Stones, with Weapon Skill Damage, Accuracy Attack, and if you can get a main stat like Strength or Vitality, that is great. Body piece is gonna be Ignomini, Curious, plus two until you get the plus three. Artifact gear is upgraded through Omen. Hands are gonna be Odyssean gauntlets obtained from Chromdub in Raisenjima or from Surim in Norg for 800 domain points. Augment this at Osem in Norg with Fern, Pellucid or Top Stones with weapon skill damage, accuracy, attack and if you can get a main stat like strength or vitality that is great. Legs are gonna be Audition Cushes obtained from Belfegor in Raisenjima or from Surim in Norg for 800 domain points. The arguments are gonna be the same for this Odyssean piece as the previous ones. Feet are gonna be Sulevia's leggings plus one until you get the plus two, obtained through Ambuscade. Rings are gonna be Career ring obtained by completing Seekers of Adulin missions. Your other ring will be Rufescent ring obtained from Warder of Mercy in Esharwan. Other options are for Steel Cyclone, use any Strength plus rings you have. There are a couple on the auction house or use your Rajas ring from Chains of Promethea. For upheaval, Use Vitality plus rings or save space by just sticking to Strength plus rings. Earrings. Moonshade Earring TP bonus plus 250, obtained by completing Wings of the Goddess missions. Your second ring will be Ishvara Earring, obtained from Peritos in Esherwan. This one is replaced by Fred Earring when you get it, obtained from Serum in Norg for a thousand domain points. Ammo piece is gonna be Knob Carry, obtained from Glassy Finker Omen Midboss. If you're working on this one, obviously use Seething Bomblet plus one or any other strength plus ammo piece. Neck piece is gonna be Abyssal Beads plus one or normal quality if you have it augmented, bought on the auction house. Otherwise, go with Foria Gorget, obtained from synergizing together all the regular weapon skill Gorgets from the quest in the name of science. Or just use Carol Necklace, obtained from Kuhn in Esha Rohan. 
Waste piece is gonna be Foria belt, obtained by synergizing together all the other weapon skill belts that drop in Abyssia areas. Or stick to Prosilio belt plus one, obtained from Surge Walk 12 in Walk of Echoes or bought on the auction house. Back piece is of course gonna be our job specific cape from Ambuscade, Anchor's Mantle, augmented with Strength plus 30 for Steel Cyclone or Vitality plus 30 for Upheaval. You can save space and just make one with Strength or Vitality, it's really up to you. The rest of the augments are gonna be Accuracy and Attack plus 20, Weapon Skill Damage plus 10%, and physical damage taken minus 10 or damage taken minus 5. That's it for the weapon skill damage sets. So let's go through the dread spike set. For your dread spike set, you're gonna want to use your Empyrean body piece, Heathens Curious normal quality or plus 1, combined with as much plus to HP as you can find. For suggestions, please go to the link in the description below or just use whatever HP plus you have available to you. And don't forget to use Dread Spikes after Drain 3 if possible. Our last set is gonna be the End Dark set. The reason for having an End Dark set is for the accuracy attack bonus it gives you, and to increase the actual End Dark damage itself, and to increase the duration. All these buffs increase the more skill plus you have put and by spending job points. If you are not engaged, you can change your weapon. Otherwise, just stick to your main weapon. But if you want to change weapon, you are gonna want to use Deacon Scythe obtained from Archangel TT in Asha Ruan. If you really want to min-max here, switch out your grip also to Kakeus Grip obtained from Iku Turso in Abyssia Vunkery or bought from the auction house. Now for your head slot. Ignomi Bergnet plus 2 until you get the plus 3. This is the artifact gear reforged, upgraded through Omen. Body is gonna be your Carmine, Scale Mail, Normal Quality or plus 1. Abduration obtained from Duke Vepar in Esharan or from Serum in Norg for 400 domain points. Bewitched Mail bought on the auction house. Any arguments works fine here. Hands are gonna be Fallen's Finger Gauntlets Normal Quality, plus one, plus two, or plus three. This is the Relic Reforged gear. Upgrade through Dynamis Divergency. Legs are gonna be Eshit Kushes obtained from Tangata Manu in Esha Sita. Augmented to Path D is nice, but not needed. Feet are gonna be Rattri Solarets bought from the Auction House. They are used for the plus 20 duration by the plus 1 when you can afford them. Rings are gonna be Stikini Ring, normal quality or plus 1, bought on the auction house. Your other ring is gonna be a Evanescence Ring obtained from Sava Sava Novik in Escher Rohan. Earrings are gonna be Mani Earring obtained from Serum in Norg for 600 domain points and a dark earring bought on the auction house. Neck piece is gonna be era pendant obtained from Omen Midboss Glassy Gorger. And for your back piece, we are gonna use your job specific cape Knit Mantle obtained by doing wreaths, augmented with refractive crystal at the Trovia at the Inventor's Collation in Western Adolin. Augmented with Dark Magic skill plus 10. Waste is gonna be Casu Sash, obtained from Kindred Crest, BC, Empty Desires, or bought on the auction house. And that's it for the Endark set. Make sure to have Endark up whenever you can for all the benefits it brings. You get access to Endark 2 when you have spent 100 job points on Dark Knight. Endark 2 is superior to the regular one. Now for some skill chains. A nice skill chain opener for this specific build is Armor Break to Steel Cyclone to Upheaval to Steel Cyclone for heavy darkness skill chain damage.
Another nice four step skill chain option after armor break has been applied is upheaval, steel cyclone to upheaval to steel cyclone. I'm not gonna get into the fast cat set here, but there are tons of fast cast gear out there. Check the link in the description for more info. And I suggest that you get a fast cast set, it is very handy. During this video I have shown you some different examples of what to expect from this build. You can solo or low man with some friends to get all the gear mentioned. Some upgrades require more work than others obviously. I hope this guide will give you the foundation to actually go and join endgame and do random stuff or start your own groups while you work towards greater builds or upgrading this one further. This gear should put you at respectable numbers or even top the pars. There is also no content you cannot do with this setup, so don't be afraid to join whatever unless people need a specific damage dealer, which is also possible. Go out and enjoy yourself and practice. Dark Knight takes a bit to get used to. I'm gonna end this with a UC Dark Knight montage with Lycurgus in action. Enjoy. I hope this was helpful for anyone interested in going for a damage dealer instead of the standard going for white mage, yeo or any other support job mantra that people keep shoving down your throat. For more info on other Dark Knight builds check the links in the description below and check out my other videos here on YouTube if you want to. Like, subscribe and comment if you found this helpful and don't forget to share this strong build with your friends. Also make sure to look me up on Twitch or here on YouTube. I stream live a few times a week and I'm looking forward to seeing you in there. Thanks for watching and enjoy your stay in Vanadil. Let's go.